And I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Madam President. We thank the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, as well as today's briefers, uh, the Minister of Water Resources of Iraq, Hassan Janabi, and the representative of the International Indigenous People Forum on Climate Change, Hindu Ibrahim. We wish to welcome the President Naur Maur Bibisi Rakul. And we understand the great significance for your country of climate change. The Russian Federation also prioritizes this issue. We are among the leaders in the international climate process, both in terms of our contribution to reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and in terms of efforts to ensure the climate regime be made universal in nature under the auspices of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. In my country, there is active use of innovative approaches which are based on the introduction of cutting-edge technologies. Madam President, perhaps my statement will sound as a dissonance as compared to other statements delivered by members of the Council. However, having said all of this, it behooves me to note that the convening of today's Security Council meeting was disappointing to us. And not because we object to collective efforts to combat climate change. Uh, quite the contrary. We cannot except the fact that today's meeting, in our view, is yet another attempt to link the issue of uh, environmental conservation to threats to international peace and security. Unfortunately, we are creating an illusion among those who are following our work that the Security Council will now tackle the climate issue and there will be immediately a turning point and a breakthrough. This is a dangerous misconception, a clear misguidance. Um, the, um, there are attempts uh, to use the climate factor as an explanation for socioeconomic and political situations in given countries and regions. Ultimately, the conclusion drawn is that climate change jeopardizes security as a whole, and yet the champions of this idea, as a general rule, burden themselves, do not burden themselves with scientifically sound specific details, nor clear explanations of the notion of security, conflict, threat, stability, as regards the climate issue. These words are used in most general terms, and what is required of us is an acknowledgement of highly abstract linkages. Such actions are not of assistance to anyone. Moreover, they misguide people and they detract the Council's attention from those issues where it genuinely can contribute to seeking solutions. I reiterate, our view is that climate change is a grave threat, an important and critical threat to all. However, the Council has neither the specialized expertise nor the mechanisms to craft viable solutions that can help to effectively counter climate change. Once again, it behooves me to note that uh, climate change is not a universal challenge in the context of international security. Rather, this needs to be addressed as regards each specific situation. At the same time, the role of the United Nations is to deliver assistance to states, states which shoulder the primary responsibility and, and, responsibility and independently determine response strategies to security threats within their national borders. During its proceedings, the United Nations uh, should unswervingly adhere to the principle of distribution of labor with the understanding that each of the United Nations' main bodies needs to operate within its area of responsibility. Madam President, the justification for the introduction of uh, climate issues at the Security Council often stems from the premise that climate change is a so-called threat multiplier and a catalyst for acts of violence. 
if we are so principled in our approach, then why, during the discussions initiated with this as a pretext, there is there are an equally important issue is being passed over in silence, namely the adverse consequences to the environment arising from uh, from violent military operations and unilateral sanctions. A, bl a glaring example of this is uh, the Western coalition bombings of Yugoslavia, Libya, and Syria. It is strange, to say the least, that none of those who have spoken today have been voicing a concern in the light of the tremendous environmental damage from such actions, not to mention the great damage caused to the health of the citizens of those countries. It is no secret that a NATO bombing of the former Yugoslav territory with the use of munitions and radioactive compounds largely depleted uranium which contaminates the environment spawned a surge in cancers, uh, had an adverse impact on the health and reproductive health of people residing in the contaminated areas. These areas still require decontamination and relevant rehabilitation measures. The situation following the Libyan misadventure has been equally tragic. The NATO bomb strikes against oil infrastructure, as well as operations by the armed opposition groups supported by the West in the vicinity of oil industries, has led to the partial or full damage, colossal fires, and contamination of the atmosphere by the byproducts of oil and oil product combustion, the ongoing illegal presence of the Western coalition in Syrian territory, it behooves me to note, prevents the restoration of government control over vast swaths of territory and consequently prevents application of national legislation, including environmental legislation, in the use of natural resources. And on the whole, the introduction of economic activity in those regions is being prevented, including household waste management. The situation is further exacerbated by unilateral anti-Syrian sanctions, as a result of which the country is stripped of opportunities to procure the necessary equipment and material to deliver on environmentally sound industrial production. Madam President, there is an alarming situation that has unfolded around the operations of the Donetsk water filtration station, which is subjected to regular shelling by the Ukrainian armed forces. In the event of the leakage of gases, gaseous chlorine storage tykes, a disastrous environmental situation and humanitarian catastrophe are likely to occur. It is difficult to imagine that those who initiated such actions were unaware of the negative consequences of environmental contamination by radioactive materials or the destruction of oil facilities. However, their preference was and is not to pay attention to this. Uh, they not in any way being eager to deliver assistance in mitigating the damage wrought. In this connection, we believe that issues of contamination of the environment as a result of criminal military operations and illegal unilateral sanctions can be viewed as threats that are, at the very least, equally significant to the climate issue. Turning to, uh, as regards climate change, I wish to reiterate that insistence upon securitization of this important issue irrevocably undermines the process of jointly seeking ways to resolve these issues. This year, there are plans to adopt a code of rules for the implementation of the Paris Agreement. In parallel, member states of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change will discuss joint actions and coordination of climate-related efforts, that is the Telenoa Dialogue Platform. Its main principle is depoliticization of climate discussions, a prevention of mutual recommendations, and attempting to understand what we can do by pulling our forces. We uh, equally 
like Hindu and Ibrahim who delivered emotional statements, we equally wish to prevent damage uh, by, to the environment of uh, indigenous peoples. Russia is helping small coastal, uh, uh, small island developing states making a contribution through UNDP. We stand ready to and are already contributing uh, to ensuring that efforts through multilateral bodies can tackle these issues. However, today's discussion at the Security Council clearly is bringing the matter into a different direction. Exploitation of the climate issue, the use of this issue to tackle purely political challenges, the imposition of one-sided standards, the departure from practical action and demagoguery as well as PR. It is important for all UN mechanisms to work calmly in combating climate change, and this is necessary. Yet at the same time, uh, artificial intersecting lines should not be created insofar as they merely obst obstruct advancement of shared interests. Only joint, uh, practically oriented action will help us to achieve the aim of uh, conservation of the global climate for the benefit of current and future generations of humankind. Thank you. The representative of the Russian Federation.